And the road is not paved for anybody, anywhere, anytime. It's just not. So it starts here, then he'll get a couple of gathers of blue glass. I'm just doing my thing. This is the result of it. Rollin Karg is living proof that it's never too late to follow your dream. Looking at his art, it's hard to believe he didn't take his first glass blowing class until he was 38 years old. When you were already established in a career, what made you have the guts to step out? Uh, well, I came to that point where, um, you know, analyzing. I mean, it didn't just happen one day I decided, shoot, I'm going to do this. I sort of realized that um, I was looking for that, you know, that happiness. I, I was trying to find my way and literally, and um, I felt like I knew enough about myself that I uh, knew that uh, like some kind of contentment or peacefulness in my life, uh, I had to find that spot, that working place where I was gonna be comfortable. Rollin originally came to Wichita to attend WSU on a football scholarship. Originally it was Wichita University then, and I studied business because that's what my dad and grandfathers told me. I was gonna be like a company president, so, um, I thought that was it, you know, and really that's sort of what I drove myself to be. Although he drove himself to be extremely successful in the corporate world, Rollins says he always felt as though he didn't quite fit in. They had a, a real way that they did things. They were passionate about their thing and they pounded you into a slot and you had to do that or you'd be gone. Which Rollins says left the creative part of him feeling very unfulfilled. Um, my midlife crisis, instead of running off with a teenage secretary, I sort of got involved in the art business. Imagine what the art world would have missed if Rollin hadn't had the guts to try something else. Surprisingly, he didn't try blowing glass right away. It just kind of evolved. I had quit my job to be a woodworker, and I was going to take a chance. See, I felt like I could make a living. and. Uh, I spent all my dough to get the woodworking business going, and it's starting to look pretty good. The trip he took changed all that. I'd been collecting glass for years, and then I saw him making it at Stu Ben, and it really, I got real interested in it. So interested, he decided to take a class under Professor Stoffer at Emporia State University. It's degrees when it comes out of the furnace. This might be a little bit, it's cooling real fast. The outside is real cool. The inside is probably still pretty close to that 2,000 degrees. And at that time, I thought it was only 50 miles over there to Emporia. It was 96 miles one way. But even that didn't matter after a while. By the end of the second week, we started working with glass. And I was like, uh, picked up that first gather, that gooey molten glass. And man, I was just like gone. I was like, a, you know, I just became really on fire. Uh, I mean, no pun intended about this business, but um, I dreamed about it. That's all I could talk about. I thought about it 24 hours a day. That wasn't the end of the story, though. Although he loved what he was doing, his business didn't take off right away, especially when it came to his paperweights. One day I made 87, 87 of them by myself. So I was excited, man. I was, oh man, these are great. And then I realized after about a year of that, I wasn't selling any of them. So by that time, I had maybe 500 of those things. So he decided to get rid of them. I was getting ready to go to Chicago one day to, for a street fair. I just took 75 of them with me. And everywhere I stopped, I remember there was a McDonald's. We stopped in to use the bathroom. I'd put some in the men's bathroom. I'd fill up with gas. I'd put some on top of the pumps. Eventually, I got rid of all those paperweights. I left them everywhere, parks, uh, hotels. He refused to let that discourage him, though, and it's a good thing, too. And, and you end up your own harshest critic, but you got to get by all that or else you stay locked in back making paperweights like I was to begin with. So um, failure is just a part of it and you just got to be willing to get up and, and charge again. And get in charge he has. He's created all shapes and sizes of glass art since then. It's not like the Big Bang Theory. All of a sudden one day I was just, just came to me whole cloth is more about just working at the process. Where it's not protected brings the silver up to the surface, sort of flushes it out. So. While commuting between Wichita and Emporia for his glass blowing classes, Rollin was also building his own furnace. It's something he continues to do to this very day. Everything he uses to make his art, Rollin custom built himself.
And when we started shooting, not only was there nobody building it, nobody even knew how, we built stuff and then we rebuilt it and then we rebuilt it again. In the meantime, we sort of got pretty good at the metalworking and the furnace built. Those furnaces have helped him create some beautiful pieces, art that can be found in galleries and private collections all over the world. Now, did you realize when you undertook this, I know you love doing it, but did you realize it was going to get to be this big? I, um, I didn't realize it was going to be like this, but I truly didn't try to think about it too much. I'd started business for other people, and so I, saw, I knew what was involved. And actually, I started the woodworking business. And I, I, if, I just deliberately didn't think too much about it because by the time I was 38, I realized one thing is that, you know, it's a really, it's sort of a trite thing because it's about the journey not destination. So um, at that time, um, when I was younger, it was all about the destination. With all the success he's had on his journey, you'd think he'd rest on his laurels. But Rollin is constantly tinkering with his art and coming up with new designs. Really, the artists, I think, that are really great artists are always uh, out there on the edge, you know. So you got to take chances. And it's in my nature to sort of be experimenting all the time and playing at it. Experimenting with the glass has also taught him some wonderful life lessons, too. The most valuable thing, though, is you don't want to waste your time. When you're doing all the time, it says, what's the difference between perseverance and stubbornness? And, and uh, so, and that's it. We don't want to waste our time too much. Admit defeat, let's move on. <laughs> Turn loose of it. If you feel like a square peg in a round hole, well, you're not alone. Like Rollin, not all people can fit comfortably into a corporate setting. Had he not taken the chance and gone out on his own. My life would have sort of been wasted. I, I couldn't have done it. I couldn't uh, make myself work at something for 50 years and, uh, and, and not be passionate about it. So I had to find something that piqued my interest. What would have happened to you if you would have stayed in that corporate world? Oh, I would have bombed out. Yeah, oh, I know that for certain. I couldn't have done it. Rollins says he doesn't regret his time in the corporate world, though, because it taught him a thing or two about what really matters. When I was in business, and I had 90-day plans, 30-day plans, five-year, 10-year plans, and uh, I thought it really mattered a lot, but now, sort of like, um, I do put one foot in front of the other and just keep doing what I do, and this is the result of it. It's only glass. <laughs> That's what Stoffer used to say when we destroyed something. It says it's only glass.